Greetings, my name is Christopher Paisley. I'm a Philadelphia public school teacher. This is my YouTube channel, Inside White Fragility. Today, I'd like to talk about the tragic canceling of Dr. Seuss. Now, this tragic canceling of Dr. Seuss actually happened yesterday on his birthday. On the anniversary of Dr. Seuss's birthday, he was officially canceled by his own Dr. Seuss Enterprises. All right, March 2nd is Dr. Seuss's birthday, and the National Read Across America Day is a day set aside for everybody to celebrate Dr. Seuss and to read because he was such an advocate of reading. And on this day and on his birthday, they said, Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. You're canceled. We're going to cancel six of your greatest books or six of your very well-known books because they're racist and mean and hurtful and they have this supposed insensitive racist imagery which really doesn't exist and when you look at the books you can really look closely and you can really look hard and you won't find it because it's not in there and we're going to look at a book um, called and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street that's the name of the book and I read that book as a child and it's a great book and we're going to look into that book and we're going to see how the supposed racist and hurtful imagery doesn't really exist. And that it's just made up by this left-wing, um, mean and vindictive group of people, cancel culture, who want to divide Americans and drive a wedge between us and separate us by identity and just basically hurt the children who need us the most. Children who need to learn how to read. All the children that Dr. Seuss was trying to reach when he was alive. All the children who he was trying to reach with the books that he wrote. And let's let's be honest, Dr. Seuss wrote books for everybody. Everybody was allowed to read Dr. Seuss's books back then and today. It doesn't matter what your race, religion, gender, or sexuality is. Everybody's allowed to read Dr. Seuss. Everybody's allowed to celebrate his genius. They could do it then and they can do it today. And the idea that there's this hurtful racist imagery in his books, especially six of his books, is just utter nonsense. And we're going to take a look at a specific book. So Dr. Seuss was a legend. All right. A quick recap of the things that Dr. Seuss did. Dr. Seuss tried to publish his first book and he was rejected by 27 publishers. He ultimately found the publisher. It was so successful that... Um, a man named William Spaulding, who was uh, his publisher's um, director of the education division, gave him a task. They said, hey, see if you can write a children's book only using 250 words, only 250 of the most common words to help children how to read. So Dr. Seuss did it. He wrote The Cat in the Hat. It's a classic. Then they had a follow-up challenge. They said, I want to see if you can do it again, only using 50 words. And then he wrote Green Eggs and Ham. And the reason is because he wanted to give these kids, you know, repetition, because it's all about repetition when you're learning how to read, repetition of the most common important words so students can learn how to read and young children can learn how to read. So that was the point. And as a matter of fact, um, Dr. Seuss, whose real name is Theodore Seuss Geisel, he was so successful that he actually founded a Random House Beginner Books division. He founded an entire division of children's books. That's how successful he was, and that's how much he dedicated his life to teaching children how to read, all children of all races. He not only did that, but if you look at the themes in his book, they're universal. They stretch ac across all identities, and what they do in addition is they break down barriers, they break down discrimination, they speak out against prejudice, and all kinds of things, okay? Especially if you're familiar with the book The Sneetches. The Sneetches is a very powerful book that rails against racism and prejudice, and it forwards the theme that we all need to come together universally as humans. Here's a clip. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon the stars. Twink, twink, twinkle, twinkle, stupid little star. 
But McBean was quite wrong. I am happy to say that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. That day they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches, and no kind of Sneetch is the best on the beaches. That day all the Sneetches forgot about stars, and whether they had one or not upon dark. Okay, so there's Dr. Seuss, there's the Sneetches. He was he was a genius in his time, and his books transcend race, religion, gender, and sexuality. He's a great man. But, of course, on the anniversary of his birthday, he gets canceled. Why did he get canceled? Why did the Dr. Seuss Enterprises, the spokesperson for Dr. Seuss Enterprises, why did they tell the Associated Press that his books are racially insensitive and that they're mean and hurtful? Why did they say that? And, and let me quote, These books portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong. Dr. Seuss Enterprises told the Associated Press. Why did that happen on his birthday? Well, there's a reason why. And it's because the left, the mean, vindictive left that wants to divide and conquer, take power and control, and pump in identity politics into everything, they're behind it. They're the ones doing it, okay? Specifically, there is a group named Research on Diversity in Youth Literature. Okay, they're a group, and they published a study several years ago and it was called The Cat is Out of the Bag, Orientalism, Anti-Blackness, and White Supremacy in Dr. Seuss's Children's Books. This was published in the February issue of their, um, I guess, their organization. And this was picked up by the School Library Journal. And they reprinted parts of this research paper. Okay, now think about that for a moment. Here's a man who dedicated his life to trying to teach children how to read, and you get this really mean, vindictive, in a way, racist organization called the Research on Diversity in Youth Literature, and all they're trying to do is trying to prove that Dr. Seuss's books are racist and hurtful. Now, now, now I, I, I don't know why they're doing that, but here's, what they're, here's one of the findings that this group found. White supremacy is seen through the centering of whiteness and white characters who comprise 98% of all characters. Notably, every character of color is male. Males of color are presented in subservient, dehumanized roles. This also remains true in their relation to white characters. Most startling is the complete invisibility and absence of women and girls of color across Seuss's entire collection, uh, children's book collection. So this group has dedicated themselves to evaluating the racism in Dr. Seuss's books. Thanks for really helping us teach children how to read. Thanks for getting on board with really branching across identities and really helping children how to read with exciting books. We really appreciate it, um, research on diversity in youth literature. You're doing a great job for America. You're, you're really helping things. So anyway, let's take a look at what's really going on here. Why are these hurtful, hateful, vindictive, and really racist groups, what are they really doing when they trash a guy like Dr. Seuss on his birthday during a day called... Uh, America, National Read Across America Day. What are they really doing? Well, I'll tell you what they're doing. They're trying to cover, cover things up in terms of politics. We have an achievement gap in America, right? And all these activist organizations and the people on the left and certain people in politics, they've really done nothing to help children. They've done nothing to help dysfunction. They've done nothing to help these kids in these neighborhoods. So they got to cover it up because they want to keep getting money. They want to keep control. They want to keep power. But what are they going to do? If they get exposed... That, you know, they're not really doing anything to help. They're going to be exposed. So what do they do? They have to cover it up. What's the real problem here in America? What's at the root of the achievement gap? Is it racist Dr. Seuss, Seuss books? Not at all. What's at the heart of the achievement gap in America, especially when we're talking about literacy and reading? Three things. Families, families and fathers, books in the home, and reading to children. If you look at the research that's been done over 50 years of educational and sociological research, you will see that children who come from two-parent families, especially children who have active fathers, children who have books in the home, and children whose parents read to them, guess what? They can read. They do well in school. They have successful lives. So I have a great idea. I have a great formula. Make sure that you father your children and take care of your children. Make sure you have books in the home, and make sure you read to your kids. If you do those things, you're going to have successful kids who do well in school and will have a good quality of life. But guess what? They don't want to push that because that's too hard. 
So what do they want to do? They want to trash people like Dr. Seuss. They want to divide and polarize America. So let's take a look at the book and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. This is a classic. I remember my parents reading this to me when I was a young child. I vividly remember sitting in my bedroom with my mom and dad and them reading this to me and I thought it was an excellent book. So let's take a look at the book. So here's the book. Here's the cover. And to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. Nothing really hurtful or racist on the cover. Okay, so let's look at page one. It's a story about this boy. And what it's really all about is it's about developing this boy's imagination. He's going to describe a scene on Mulberry Street, but he's going to make a mountain out of a molehill. Okay, so we have this first page. He's walking down Mulberry Street. Okay. And then he comes across a man on a horse and carriage. It's a man riding a horse and there's a carriage behind him. It's pretty boring, nothing else going on. So all of a sudden the boy's imagination starts to kick into gear, much like Dr. Seuss. What happens? Well, the horse turns into a zebra. Wow, the boy's imagination turned the horse into a zebra and now the man is driving a zebra instead of a horse. Nothing really hurtful or racist there. The next scene, the cart is no longer a man, but it's now a chariot and it's a chariot driving a some type of zebra. Nothing hurtful or racist there, okay? The next scene, it's now a reindeer instead of a horse. And the chariot is now driving a reindeer, okay? The next scene, okay, look at this. There is now a sled behind the reindeer, and there are two people on the sled. Again, nothing hurtful or racist yet, just a lot of good text that teaches kids how to read, teaches them how to use rhyme patterns and alliteration and all kinds of things. Okay, helping kids be interested in reading. The next page, okay, it's no longer a reindeer. It's now a blue elephant, and it is now a man who is wearing a turban and who has rubies, and here is a Raja. Okay, multicultural. It's not a white person. It's now, you could, I guess you could argue a person of color, but that would be a matter of debate because if you look at um, Arabs, or the Arab culture, even the Indian culture, you could debate whether or not that would even be considered Caucasian or not. So whether or not this person's race is, you know, it would be a matter of debate. But nothing wrong here, because if you're representing a person from this part of the world, whether it's in India or an Arab country, of course, Arabs wear turbans, nothing racist about that. If I were to say Arabs wear turbans, is, is that a racist thing to say? It's a fact is what it is. And if, you, if you're going to describe a person's culture as racist, it's a pretty sick thing to do, okay? So that's that picture. Nothing wrong there, okay? We get to the next picture, and he's no longer pulling a cart. He is now pulling a band. Look, it's a big band. There's lots of people on the back of this thing, and it's a band. They're listening to music, okay? Nothing wrong here. Then we have an old man in a house behind the band. And, in, and instead of having a blue elephant, you now have two yellow giraffe with this man. Okay, nothing wrong here. Just a lot of fun, a lot of interesting, imaginative things going on. We move ahead, and now it says, oh, look, it's Mulberry Street. It's an intersection. We need the police here so we can guide them through the intersection so there's no crash, right? So then we have adding into the scene a bunch of policemen on their motorcycles and they're riding through nothing wrong here okay i guess if you were really crazy you could say it was anti-police look, look how they're presenting these police riding these these motorcycles Ooh, that's r r really disparaging to police so is he now anti-police his stuff is sick man these people are sick all right the next uh picture we now have the mayor and he is here alongside cheering them along with this big kind of carnival going down the street. Again, this boy's imagination and, and the great text and making things fun with reading and rhyme. Okay, now we have the next picture. Now we have some, I guess this is Oriental. They're going to use the word Oriental or Asian people. There's an Asian man with chopsticks. Oh, I guess that's what's disparaging. They're describing an Asian man with chopsticks. I guess that's racially insensitive and disparaging. But I have a question. Honestly, do Asian restaurants know that chopsticks are racist? Because every you know Asian restaurant that I go to, they have chopsticks there. So not sure what's racist or hurtful about that. Okay, so now the boy goes home. He goes up the steps, and his imagination settles back to reality. And when it all comes full circle, it's all simply all of this sprang out of this boy's active imagination when it's really just a man dri driving a, hor a horse and a cart, 
and all of this came out of it. So that's the racist, hurtful book that needs to be canceled by Dr. Seuss, by these vindictive, mean, and in a way evil and racist people who are trying to drive a wedge through America, trying to prevent children from reading and liking reading and being happy about reading because they want to pump in identity politics and they want to divide and conquer and they want to trash good people like Dr. Seuss. This is a real tragedy.